Being an expat, we are all a little contemplated about the charitable organizations and their work processes here in Qatar. Today, I present you a leading personality, Mr. Isa Muhammad Ali Shah, the Director of Communication Department at Qatar Red Crescent, which is a leading organization which contributes to the social and humanitarian services. He will be giving us an insight to how exactly these organizations run and serve in the field of charity. Assalamu alaikum everyone and Ramadan Kareem to all of you. I welcome you all in Spotlight with Zunira. Viewers, as we are all best again with the holy month of Ramadan and are spiritually charged to receive the unlimited bounties and blessings as promised by our Lord. And what better way to get it than doing a charity? That's why viewers, I have with me today the Communication Director of Qatar Red Crescent, Mr. Isa Muhammad Ali Shak with me. Assalamu alaikum Mr. Isa. We Al welcome you today. Alaikum salam and I'm very happy to be here and thank you for having me. Can you please explain your journey with the Qatar Red Crescent? Okay. I've started as you indicated uh, my career as a journalist with the Ministry of Information at that time in Qatar. Mm -hmm. And since uh, a, a journalist is always concerned with happenings and concerns with what takes place in his environment and surrounding. Exactly. As, a, as a journalist myself, I was always being concerned with issues that concerns individuals, concerns the human beings. Mm -hmm. And therefore, most of my writings has been around the well-being of a humanitarian and a human beings. Uh, but uh, for some reasons or another, I have left uh, journalism as a career and joined uh, Qatar Petroleum. Okay. So that took me into administration mm -hmm. and uh, training and development. Again, as a training and development specialist, I was involved with individuals, with the well-being of individuals and the improvement in their lives. Uh, so it was to me a continuity, although a continuity that has uh, changed from general view to specific individualism, where mm -hmm. I am concerned with individual and his progress and his work. But the concern was there. Uh, but uh, and as a writer, I continued writing my articles in the newspaper, the Arabic local newspapers, about Arabic issues, the well-being of the our societies, Arab societies, our Muslim societies, and and the international the relationship in the international arena. All these have been, have been carrying with me, even though I left journalism as a career. So when I retired in 2013, a friend of mine who we've been uh, working uh, has joined uh, QRCS, okay. Catalytic Crescent, and asked me if I would like to join them. So <laughs> I said, yes, why not? So I joined them because- But was this under your uh, plan? like? After retirement, you're yes, going to do this. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Uh, as I said, I always wanted to work uh, with, with uh, such organization. I was involved uh, with uh, such work myself with uh, an organization that was established by Sheikh Moza, okay. Her Highness, uh, that was specifically geared toward the well-being of disabled and special, special needs. needs. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I've been involved as a journalist, as a, an activist in the society with such work. Mm -hmm. So Catholic Crescent was the right venue for me to carry on with this work on a more, a, a bigger scope actually, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just focusing on one group, 
I found uh, Reducrescent to provide me with a larger scope, with a wider uh, spectrum where not only in Qatar, but uh, as an international arena that I could help. Mm -hmm. 2014 uh, was already a, a crisis happening everywhere, mm -hmm. especially in the Middle East, especially Syrian crisis. Yes. So I thought this is a good place to be. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's how I uh, okay. So how do you reach out to the needies? We see where the need is, okay, so we go there to that place. For example, in Syria, we have uh, offices in Turkey mm -hmm. uh, on the border between Syria and uh, Turkey where we, through that office, we provide help to the internal area of Syrian uh, people. Uh, we have people working inside Syria as well. Uh, especially in the medical and health sectors. Tell us about the earthquake that happened in Nepal and your team was the first one yes, for aiding them. Yes. So how did you, your team help them? Well, the earthquake was a news. Mm -hmm. so, and it was so large in scope that the reaction uh, from us and other organizations internationally, of course, was there. But alhamdulillah, we were the first to arrive there. We were the first to, to assist the people there. Mm -hmm. We looked into what situations, what is needed. We were there with our uh, field hospital. Mm -hmm. We helped with the water uh, and uh, requirement. Uh, mm -hmm. We do that as well. Uh, our people uh, did investigations where the requirements or what the requirements that needs to be uh, there. So we did all that in cooperation, of course, with the local government of Nepal. Okay. Mm -hmm. If an expert over here wants to help somebody in need in their own homelands, how can an expert, you know, uh, approach you and what will be the procedure? Well, I'm glad you asked that question mm -hmm. because this question has been always in, in our mind in Qatar Crescent because we realize that uh, uh, a lot of expats living in Qatar want to help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there are some of them are new in the society here who arrived recently who don't know what are you know what are they who should they approach okay so we do have programs that actually expand in all over we have offices in Africa we have offices in Asia uh, we have been in Pakistan we have been in Afghanistan we have been in Iraq we have been in Syria we have been in Sudan we have been in uh, Central Africa. So we are all everywhere that requires. So that gives and you... this is all with the help of people here? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, we are in organizations that is totally dependent on the charitable efforts from people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now maybe somebody asks, so aren't you government organization? Mm -hmm. No, we are or not. Or if gov government is helping you as well? Well, the government as anybody else. Uh, you, we look at the government as an individual okay. who wants to help others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, since we are an international organization, we are under the umbrella of the uh, Federation of the Declass, the Declassant mm -hmm. uh, organizations. So we do have that uh, international umbrella. That gives the, the government and whoever, okay, uh, that uh, leeway to go into any country because we do have that power, the power of international and the humanitarian law that cover, cover our uh, activities and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the government comes to us and say, okay, I need, uh, for example, uh, Nepal again, mm -hmm. okay. They wanted to help Nepal, who is better than the decrescent that been there, yes. okay, to, to help that, okay. Recently, we helped the, the government wanted to help high people of Haiti. Okay, okay. we mm -hmm. were also their uh, means to help the Haitian people after the uh, flood there, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works, but yes, most of our fund comes from the people. Okay. That's where our funds comes. So we do always say Alhamdulillah and thank you people mm -hmm. for helping us to help you to help others. Okay. But how do between. you assure the person giving charity that that charity is going to the right person that we need to give? So we you do reports. Oh, okay, you do reports. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the local people over here, the needy, those who are less fortunate. Yes. Like, what is the criteria 
if uh, anybody of our followers, if they are in need, so it would be informative for them. We do have a, a department, we call it uh, the, the local the development department, mm -hmm. which is responsible for taking care of all the, the requirement of the needy people who mm -hmm. uh, have, of course, and we do, do investigate. how do you declare that they, these are the needy people? Well, how suppose, do you assure that? Suppose Isa has a need, okay, mm -hmm. and he approaches catalytic lesson, okay. Mm -hmm. now, as I said, it is an incredible uh, uh, situation. We yes. have the credibility of the person as well as the credibility of the organization. So we do investigate. Okay. okay. We look into the matter, mm -hmm. see where are the uh, area of need. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you find out that people think that they need something, but uh, actually their need is somewhere else yeah. and something else. We, our, always, our objective is not to help the people just to give for that day. Mm -hmm. No, we try to enable them, okay, mm -hmm. for con for our sustainability of development. That's what we do. We try to, instead of giving them fish, mm -hmm. we try to teach them how to go and fish. Okay. Yes. yes. So that gives that person. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we do are involved with disabled people, you know, okay. with elderly people. We are involved with, uh, and this is not only Qataris, huh? Mm -hmm. With all Everybody. people who approach us. I Some have a question here. Yes, sure. Like, for example, if a family is needy or in need and they want to, you to help them, do you give them work also? Like, uh, children, if they have children, they can work for a while for something and then earn out of it. And that's also a kind of help, you know, that you're giving them. We try to do anything that might help that family, definitely. Okay. But do you have an organization? No, we don't have an organization or? that might employ people. Okay. Oh, okay. But we approach other mm -hmm. people that might help. Okay. okay. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of people, a lot of organizations, they would like to help. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of the time we are successful, alhamdulillah, because actually this is a country of giving. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not talking about only the Qataris, but the whole community. Yes. Uh, uh, as long as they know that they could do it, they do help. You're the question in itself, mm -hmm. you know, what if experts that want to help? Okay, so that's in itself an indication that there are people mm -hmm. and that you have found that uh, yeah. indications, people who want to help, okay? Now, we would provide whatever means they want for mm -hmm. them to facilitate them to help others, mm -hmm. okay? They could approach us anytime. We have programs that not only for locally, but also internationally, so people who want to give either for charitable uh, activities in Qatar, all outside, we could do that. Okay. You can give uh, the complete directions. The of complete how directions, to because we do have the uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have people who work there. As I uh, uh, maybe uh, we, we used to have an office in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we would love to, to open that uh, office in Pakistan, mm -hmm. but this is, needs a lot of fun. Okay, so if Pakistani people, for example, in Qatar, and uh, I'm sure a lot of Pakistanis are will be, in, you know, in, in Qatar, mm -hmm. like yourself. You were, you were born in Qatar. Yes. Okay. So th there is a lot of ways that we could uh, we could help. I'm very glad you've asked about these questions because we want to reach yes. the whole expat. And I'm sure people. expat doesn't know much about the charity yeah, organizations but, here. Yeah, please. Yes. Now through this, okay, <laughs> uh, they could have my email. They could have my uh, okay through this uh, interview. Please let them know that we will be able and hope you know, we will do everything in our power to provide mm -hmm. them with their ways and means for them to help their own people or whatever uh, charitable uh, effort that they would like to do, okay, mm -hmm. uh, we will do that for them, definitely. Okay, Mr. Isa, tell me about the new project, Hamlet Ramadan. What is it about? Hamlet Ramadan is an annual activities that mm -hmm. we do every Ramadan. It involves projects locally and internationally. It, a lot of times as iftar, iftar sayim, mm -hmm. okay, uh, that we do here, or we provide boxes of, of food for the needy. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, again, this is a project that we do in uh, different countries. Okay. Uh, people, as you know, uh, like to donate in Ramadan usually more than any other month. Yes. It's also month of zakat. People do their yes. uh, zakat. Uh, and that money we that provided to us, we develop a project. Uh, they provide uh, you know a little bit of uh, 
clothing or mm. food items, uh, you know, but... So people yes, can, uh, can, can yes, come to okay, you and uh, yes. provide you with yeah. all these things? Okay. Yes, okay. We do or it they in can so even many give countries. you money and you are the one providing clothes or food or no? Yes. You they can could do, do that? Yes, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, not only individual, but sometimes companies actually as, as myself, as the head of the uh, Tendling Committee in Qatar the class. And today I just signed Mm -hmm. uh, a request for tendering to provide uh, food, boxes food to okay. uh, label people, mm -hmm. uh, workers here in Qatar, which donated by by, by a company. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So this project mostly to do of يعني Ramadan is uh, iftar. People mm -hmm. are fasting. Uh, so this is actually has more food uh, food, uh, yeah. food items mm -hmm. and food feelings, if I may. Yes. You know. <laughs> Okay, but uh, we do other programs as well. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, in Sudan, okay. Somalia, uh, as far as I remember, and also Afghanistan, we mm -hmm. did program. Okay, Mr. Isa, would you like to share with us any of your most tragic experience or unforgettable experience that you had with Qatar Red Crescent? Well, I don't want I don't want to say tragic experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been all good experience, okay. but. First time I joined them, uh, actually I joined them in August 20, uh, 2014. Then in October I was in Erbil, Kurdistan, mm. Iraq. So I had for the first time in my life, I visited a refugee's camp. So that gave me a good eye opener mm -hmm. of what is a refugee's camp, how the refugees live, okay. It really, although I've been writing about a lot of issues that involves uh, Arabic uh, politics, okay, and and uh, therefore, so when I saw those uh, refugees, okay, and how this has this the uh, crisis in Syria has impacted on their lives, okay, uh, children uh, not having to go to school, you know, okay, just looking at child, okay, and then if you want to see. What is the future of that child? Okay, mm -hmm. not being attending a school, for example. Unfortunately, you could see two, two things only. You could see a possibility of a criminal in the future, somebody who's going to be so angry. Yes. Okay. Or, unfortunately, he might be a target for criminal organizations, uh, terrorist organizations, who could then employ that boy. Okay, because he is really going to be frustrated. He's going to be angry. Yes, with okay. no parents. With no, not, no parents, no future, no nothing. Future. Okay, so he's a good target, you know. So visiting uh, Albil at that time was, was uh, as I said, uh, an eye opener. Mm -hmm. Then after that, uh, in December of the same year, I was a head of GCC mission to uh, Lebanon to look into the need of the Syrian displaced people in Lebanon. Uh, Lebanon, they call them displaced. Uh, and again, you know, going to Lebanon and now looking at the Syrian displaced and refugees in Lebanon, it reminded me of another tragedy that we in Arab world have experienced, the Palestinian tragedy, who still live in refugee camps in Lebanon and in the borders with with the occupied land and uh, then it reminded me of all the tra tragedies of the Palestinian in the last 66 years, 70 years. So it's the feeling that you have, you get from this experience, you know. I wasn't uh, targeted or I wasn't, you know, anything happened to me, but uh, just living the, the experience, mm -hmm. looking at the uh, elderly people, the women, you know. Uh, living in a tent, and when I went into a tent, having like about 10 people in a tent, okay, uh, it's not in, and those people who are in the tent, one day they used to live in their own home, mm -hmm. respectfully, okay, had everything they wanted, you know, they had, um, there is a hadith, hadith for Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Arabic says, Amanun fi Sirba, okay, that person who has a cover on his head, okay, who had his food, okay, and uh, who was living in peace, mm -hmm. he had the whole world in his hand. 
Okay. Now, and then you compare that to the individuals you see in the tents, okay, mm -hmm. who lost all this. You know, how could they live with themselves? How they could wake up next morning, looking, seeing themselves, looking at me and at you to provide help to them. You know. True. Uh, so this is the tragedy. It's not an individual tra tragedy. It is a tragedy of uh, a nation. Mm -hmm. Tragedy of, of not only the Arab nation as well, it is a tragedy of the Muslim nations. If we don't move to do something about this tragedy, it might spread, unfortunately, which mm -hmm. is hard almost, yes. you know, spread. So it will be worse for us afterwards. Yes, it is. So. Okay. Uh, look at Syria, there is nothing back for these people to go back to Syria. The whole country is destroyed. I cannot imagine that, uh, you know, that this has happened. Yes, yes, true. So, how about the Syrian refugees? Have Qatar given them any place here in Qatar or have you worked with them or no? Well, yes, uh, we have, just to let you know, we have a big number of uh, medical centers, mm -hmm. okay, inside Syria. Okay. Uh, you all heard about uh, Hamlet Halab, Halab Labbe, okay. in uh, uh, last year mm -hmm. during the National Day, which was turned into, and instead of yes. celebration, it was turned into a day of support to Syrian Syria, and to yes. Halab, exactly, uh, the city of Halab and mm -hmm. the, its people. Uh, Qataris as well as expatriates donated almost 300 something million mm -hmm. riyals for the Syrian people. Yes, we do help. We have an office there in, uh, in Turkey and the border, Ghazi Antab, which has about 45 to 50 employees. Okay. Uh, well, actually more. It has mm -hmm. almost 75 people. Mm -hmm. We have 700 people working inside Syria. We continuing helping Syria, uh, either from individual donations. Would you believe it that Qatar the mm -hmm. has developed a project during war? During, during war. Okay. During the civil war in Syria. We have trained Syrian of how to plant okay, their homes to provide themselves with the food. We have uh, wheat, mm -hmm. you know how to grow wheat in a, in a uh, war zone. Okay, mm -hmm. We have trained Syrian people to fill their land with products to help themselves. So this is what I was mentioning, stability, mm -hmm. sustainability of, you know, people to, to provide for themselves. That's what we mean of how we look at our work and our help is, is how to maintain the dignity uh, of, of the people. Our mm -hmm. slogan is that we want people to have dignity mm -hmm. and, uh, and safe life. That's what we aim at Katara de Crescent to help people with, okay? And therefore, we do our best. That's great, that's great. Okay, Mr. Risa, now coming towards the end of the show today, how do you describe success in your life? In your way, how do you describe success? To be frank, this two years has been the most successful, successful. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, as I said, as a writer, I was writing, mm -hmm. okay? Now people react to what light. Yes. Okay, either they, they say uh, like or they dislike, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, how impact of what you write is something that you might find a few years later, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you are involved directly, okay, and you see that, okay. With such uh, activity. The help, okay, that mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, you could do as a communication uh, manager, communication director, okay. Maybe I'm not in the field but I could see what's happening in the field and I would like to, uh, to carry that uh, mm -hmm. picture okay, to you, to him, to everybody of, mm -hmm. of how, what is happening, what is the need and how you can help. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we publish these pictures and we publish these stories, it's not just to tell what we are doing, mm -hmm. it's we are telling you what you can do. You know? yes. So I hope, that if I may, through you, a class, get this message across that yeah. uh, our uh, publications, our uh, media, our uh, uh, you know uh, communication is to just let you know that there are people who are in need. Mm -hmm. You can help if you want to help. We are there. The Catalytic Crescent is there for you to provide you 
the means okay of how you can help other people your last message for our followers viewers looking at you yeah. any message for them yeah don't hesitate mm -hmm. okay to do good okay whenever you feel like you want to do good uh, do it Okay, uh, investigate. Uh, don't say, oh, how can I do it? And then you stop. No. Say, how can I do it? Ask questions, approach people, approach organizations. Communication now is much, much easier. easier okay. Yes. Uh, this country is a very multi language. Okay, yes. people now always, everywhere speak different languages. So there is no way of saying, I cannot reach. Mm -hmm. No, you can't reach. The Quran says we have I cre created you from different tribes, from different uh, uh, families, to, for you to know each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do that. Let's just get together. Let's know each other. Let's help each other. And by that, we do, we do the good deeds that will be, will be rewarded for uh, later on, inshallah, in heaven. Thank you very much, Mr. Isa. Me, along with my team, are truly honored to have you with us today. Well, it was a complete pleasure having you here. Thank you, and it's the, my honor to be here. And I hope, I hope that I have uh, uh, get the message across to everybody that Catholic Crescent is there to help you, to help other people. So please don't stop at the door, mm -hmm. knock the door, walk in, and we'll provide you with all the answers that might cross your mind to help other people uh, wherever you think you want to get that help to, to go to. Thank you Thank very you. much. So viewers, this is it for today. It was Mr. Isa with us from Qatar Red Crescent. Hopefully, this episode is as much knowledgeable for you as it was for me today. Charity is something that benefits the giver more than the receiver. Remember me in your prayers. This is Zunira Malik signing off for today. Take care. Bye.